Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In this Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you are going to learn how to cut out patterned paper using your SDX125. Follow along with whichever machine you have. We're going to be using paper called Ice Cream Corner and it's part of a new suite of products from Stampin' Up! in our January to June mini catalog. I'll show you the spread in just a few minutes. I'm going to teach you a few tricks about this, this kind of paper when you see it because you don't want to have to let your machine get the best of you and there's, there's ways to get around these things. And the first thing is that this popsicle, which this popsicle piece, which I had the most success with, has a little bit of issues with contrast because whenever you scan in pattern paper, you want the popsicle or whatever you're scanning in, in this case the popsicle, to contrast with the background. So we have a nice white background and we have popsicles which pretty much delineate themselves from the background. Now, here's some issues though. There's some paint splatter and that's on purpose that the artist put the paint splatter there. But that paint splatter might make little nibs around your popsicle because it'll try to it'll try to scan in the splatter and then it'll try to make a little outline around the outside. We can ex ignore small object size and try to get rid of that splatter, but still we want we want there to be like nice contrast between the foreground and the background. So what we're going to do for a couple of these popsicles, just to show you, we're going to use what I call the pencil trick, and that's just to sort of outline, whenever you have a popsicle that doesn't contrast real well with the background, like this light color here, I'm just going to put a little pencil mark. I don't need to go around the bottom because it already has a good, good contrast with the popsicle stick, but I'm just outlining the little shape around the top. And this one, although it has some paint splatter, I might just help it along. Just put a little bit of a line there. And we don't need to, I'm, I don't need to scan every popsicle in this bunch to teach you about how to work with this pattern paper. But this was the paper I had the most success with. In other words, after I used my pencil trick, I had a big piece of 12 by 12 and I scanned the whole top half of it and all but one didn't scan. So it was a really, really good success rate for this popsicle paper. So I'm just teaching you how to get, how to repeat my results and get a great success rate yourself. All right, so there we go. So I've used, I've used the pencil and I've outlined a few popsicles and if they don't all scan, that's fine because th the point is I just want you to be able to see how to scan in pattern paper and cut these out using a little bit of an outline distance and how that will work. So I'm putting, I'm putting the paper in the top right part of my mat. It doesn't matter where you put it. Okay, I like this top right corner. It's just a little stickier. Okay, let's let's look here. We're going to turn on your machine. You're going to see pattern and scan. So this is for any pattern papers you have. And a pattern paper is something you're going to directly cut out. So you're going to click on scan and you're going to directly cut out the pattern. So you're going to select direct cut. You're not saving any of the information. You're just directly cutting it out. So click on direct cut. This is asking where you want to temporarily store the information. You're going to store it on your machine. And I'm going to use, for this popsicle paper, okay, for ice cream corner, this popsicle paper, I'm using the black and white recognition mode because there's pretty good contrast between the popsicle and the background, okay? Your options are, if you want to use color recognition mode, which we'll use later in the tutorial, that's where you click on it here. And the scan area, I'm using the 12 by 6 because my paper is on the top of the mat. And I'm going to click OK. I'm going to start. Now, the, the ice cream corner paper itself comes in 12 by 12. I happen to cut a lot of it up for my, for what's called my paper shares. So I had a lot of it cut already in six by six, but I do want to show you the piece, the pieces of 12 by 12 I cut earlier because it'll help you see my success rate for this piece of paper when I show you sort of the reverse of what I cut out. All right, so now the reason it's dirty over here is because it only scanned in the top half of the mat. So here are my popsicles. It didn't scan in the bottom. That's why it's all white. This is just dirt and extra lines that I definitely want to ignore. See, I don't want all that stuff to be scanned in. And look at this great success rate with these popsicles. So let's first of all just, just zoom into the part where we have popsicles. I mean, this is, this is fantastic. Like almost every popsicle, and after I did my pencil trick, cut out, okay? Or not cut out, it selected. Okay, so what I do now, I'm just gonna zoom in and show you that. And I'll show you how to fix that some more. So this one here, not quite all the way, but when I put an outline distance around it, it might fix that one. All the rest, great job. They all selected, and that's what I want.
Okay, so let's zoom back out. So you can, so first of all, when you don't, when you want to get an area that you don't want to cut out, you first of all, you can make a selection. So that's how to ignore this dirt on the mat. I selected the area using this selection. The next way to get rid of things like these little things is to ignore object size. See, I'm ignoring these tiny bits of paint splatter, dirt, things that got selected on the mat. So you might be wondering how far do I ignore the object size? You don't want to go, these are small popsicles, okay? And I have, I have some already cut out. Where's my little bucket of crafty goodness? I usually have my little bucket. Okay, so the popsicles are already cut out and I have to reach for something just to show you one popsicle. Okay, so here, here we go. See, some of them have little little humps around them. So what I wanna do, and that's okay, because that kind of makes it kind of fun. So here's some popsicles that I cut out already. Okay, so what I'm doing is, you wanna ignore, let me, let me measure this. This is, it's over an inch, but it's not quite two inches. So if you ignore up to about an inch, right, you're going to ignore all the dirt, but you're not going to ignore the very popsicle you're trying to cut out. I hope that makes sense. So you're not, you wanna ignore small objects, but if you go too high with the ignore object size, then you're going to ignore the very thing you're trying to cut out. So you can keep going, but don't go too high with the ignoring object size. And then the third way is, after you, you can edit out the any objects that you still wanna get rid of, like maybe this half popsicle, except I like that one because I could actually use that as part of an embellishment. First of all, you wanna add your outline distance. That's the point zero four. That's adding an outline distance to make a little bit of a, a white edge around your popsicle. Now, when you do that, some of those little things that weren't quite selected well, like look at that, that little messed up part, that gets forgiven because it now puts an outline around the whole popsicle. So we, we're already fixed what we need to fix there. But if you did need to fix anything else, you can go into the edit mode and that's how you can fix. Like if I wanted to delete this popsicle and not cut the whole thing out, that's where I could do it. I could trash whatever I don't want to cut out in this area here using the trash, but I don't need to. But those are the three ways to edit out something. You make a selection, you ignore object size, or you just edit out the objects you don't want to cut. So now we're going to click OK, and we put a 0 0.04 outline distance around these popsicles. I wonder if I accidentally deleted that. It might be out of the cutting area. We'll see. Sometimes when, when something is too close to the edge of the mat, it doesn't get cut. I'm going to click on Cut. Yeah, see, that's the one. The popsicle on the top, which I would have saved. The reason I would have saved it is because a half a popsicle could have been used as an embellishment anyway. So I would have saved it, but it didn't let me which is fine. I'm going to click OK. And I'm, it's saying that that little one was out of the cutting area, so it's not selected. So I'm going to click on Cut. I click OK, and I click Cut, and I hit Start. So it's going to take two minutes, and I'll see you back here in two minutes, and I'll edit this video together. I'll talk about the auto blade when I get back. It's finished cutting. We click OK. For this particular paper, I used an auto blade because I'm using the SDX machine, so I used an auto blade technology. That means that it went in and it determined the blade depth it needed based on the kind of paper, the designer shows paper. But if you're using a CM model of machine where you have to set your blade depth using a number, then I recommend a blade depth of three for using designer shows paper of Stampin' Up. Stampin' Up designer shows paper, double-sided. Again, I'll show you the different papers later when I get to that part of the video. I'm going to show you the the different patterns. All right, so let's talk about how to remove this. And you might be saying, wow, your mat's really dirty, but I hear a sticky sound. That's true because I re-stick my mats all the time. So I re-stick them and that's what that sticky sound is. I use two-way glue and I have videos on that. I'll link to them later when I get a chance in the description. If not, just go to my playlist and you'll find all kinds of stuff that you need. All kinds of tutorials on scan and cut. I have courses, I have all kinds of tutorials. So now I'm taking these off with a spatula and I'm just saving the ones I need to erase, putting them off to the side. Okay, so little little things like this. You get your little paper snips and there might be a little nib. I call them a little nib, right? Let's turn this paper over. See, see how there's a little nib because of that paint splatter? So you can just kind of cut those little nibs off. That means it just saw the little paint splatter and it cut around it. No big deal, right? But perfect, perfect job. I mean, these are, these are fantastic. These are all great embellishments to have. That one I want to erase. These three I want to erase. The rest are all good. Okay, I don't need to erase them all to show you, but you have your pencil mark, and 
I mean, I just love how these came out. Okay, this one has a little bit of extra white paper. Somehow it got a little piece of white paper stuck on the edge there. Again, probably due to paint splatter, but little pa paper snips are good for that. Now you have your piece of, you have your pencil marks and you want to erase them. Now never use the red, never use the red eraser because it'll leave like a stain on here. And so you want to use Pentel eraser as a white eraser. Or I have a new electronic eraser, thanks to my crafty friends. Okay, um, I'm, I'm just going to use this for a second. Let's just do, do, do. Okay, so I'm going to just erase. But this one kind of erases a little bit of the colors. So you have to be careful not to erase. Two, with the electronic eraser, to be careful. Because it, if you if you get, it'll get a whole layer of color off if you're not careful. But then you could just use this kind of eraser. And yes, eraser marks are getting all over my, or eraser little things are getting all over my mat. So I can use this kind of eraser. This just gets, this doesn't, this Pentel eraser doesn't get rid of any color. Nothing's wrong with the electronic eraser. It works great. But what I'm saying is if you hold too long, you start rubbing off the paint or the, the dye on the paper. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of painter's tape and I'm going to clean up all those little pieces of eraser because I don't want to get that stuck in, you know, you don't want to get your inside of your mat dirty. But I mean, I'm telling you, you can clean out your machine easy enough. I have videos on that. Don't panic about a little bit of eraser marks. You know, I'm, I'm a very messy crafter and my machine, I mean, nobody uses their machine. I don't think anybody, I'm not going to say nobody. I can't say nobody, but 99% of people do not use their machine as much as me. And I don't worry about little eraser marks and things. I could have erased that pencil mark. But you see, now I have all these little popsicles. Okay, so we're good. We have good, we've cut out pattern paper with the scan and cut. That was paper number one. We have a few little nibs, a few little nibs. We can work them off, but you don't even need to work them off because you know what? If you don't cut them off, when you layer your popsicles, like say you do have a little nib on there or a little bit of a messed up piece. When you layer your popsicles for your projects, which I always show you projects at the end of my video, you can cover up any little messed up pieces anyway, just by layering the popsicles like that in your designs. All right, now let's talk about this piece of paper here. Let's work with this paper. This paper, I tried black and white recognition mode. And I'm going to try that again just for, for you to see. And I don't, I really didn't need the pencil trick too much on here. But I had a different issue and it, was, it had to do with black and white versus color. So I the pencil mark might work a little bit on the bottom of the cones. It, I mean the pencil trick, not the pencil mark. The pencil trick, I didn't really need it on my cones. My issue is more about black and white recognition mode versus color mode. But I did have a little problem with some of the bottom of the cones getting cut off. Now I've placed this piece of ice cream cone paper onto the mat. Now when I tried this earlier, I had to use color recognition mode for this paper to get these ice cream cones to be recognized. But I think just by taking, you know, a little pencil again, I won't have to use color recognition mode, but I do want to show you my results of doing that earlier. And I had much better success rate when I did that. But I think it was just because a few of these ice cream cones, they're not connected all the way. Like the, the ice cream, not connected meaning there's a little bit of light color ice cream that's not kind of, con it's not contrasting with the background. So again, just to avoid having to use color recognition mode because that takes much longer, just kind of go in there and fix your ice cream cones. Okay, and now I'm just going to go back and let's do this. Let's do this paper. We're going to go turn on your machine, pattern and scan, scan, direct cut. Save it to the machine, 12 by 6, and start. And let's see how we do with this one. You know, results vary every time you try this. But I do, I do like to tell you my results so you can try to repeat them. Okay, we're going to click OK. Pretty good. I mean, you see how it didn't really get all these ice cream cones? Let's see if we can't ignore object size and we... Because we, this ice cream cone was cut off anyway because I'm using a, a six by six sheet now. So we're going to click OK. 
and we're going to click well we can keep ignoring object size even more oops not that big just one inch is good or up to about an inch now we're going to click okay and see if i can't add the outline distance and see if i can get some yeah it's it forgave a couple of my ice cream cones so this one one two three yeah this is good enough for me i don't need if i went into color recognition mode i might have better success but right now just for the intents and purposes of this tutorial i'm going to erase i'm going to delete any bed any incomplete ice cream cones and i still have enough good ones to show you so we're going to click okay i got my outline distance my outline distance of adding that that little just the act of adding the little 0 0.04 outline distance it makes the ice cream cones cut out so much better because it gets rid of any of those those little bits which i really like okay so we're going to now cut out these and i'll show you the results of those in just one minute it's finished cutting we say okay we go over here we lift up the designer series paper and again like i said when i use color recognition mode i had a little bit better results but for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to just show you this because I showed you how to change to color recognition mode if you have to do that. It just takes so much longer. These are fantastic. These came out way better than my first batch because, because doing that little pencil trick on those little open areas on those ice cream cones really, really helped work, helped cut these out much better. So I'm very, very happy with these ice cream cones. And again, to increase your results, better success rate, you're either gonna use color recognition mode or you're gonna just fill in. Like this one, probably the pencil trick, will work if I just do this on this one. I'm doing it up in the air, but you know what I mean? There's this one little really light part of the ice cream cone. It's just not connected to the outside. You need to be disconnected. I mean, this needs to be isolated from the background so that it has good contrast. I get, I get questions all the time in my user group and in my, I mean, all the time. Oh, paper chef, I'm not getting good results with my pattern paper. And then they show me the paper and the, the designs are all open, meaning they're open, they're not enclosed. These are enclosed designs. This is good. This is setting apart from the background. If you don't have an enclosed design with clear contrast between the foreground and the background, you're just not going to have success. And don't, you know, don't frustrate yourself. Don't, not all papers cut out. I mean, even in color recognition mode, not all papers cut out. Oh, I'm so happy. That one cut out really well. In fact, better than the first time around. So let's now go to this paper here. This is the paper that on my first try, I only had success with these cones that were sort of Bermuda Bay color, okay, sort of the yellowish ones. But so then I had to do some trickery. So let's just try to see what happens with this paper, okay, without me doing anything to it, just to show you how these tricks can really help. Okay, so we've done, we've done the first paper. We use the pencil trick on the, both the first and second paper. We use color rec, uh, black and white recognition mode. Now let's go ahead and scan in this third type of paper. These are the only three you'd really want to cut out because these are the ice cream cones, the popsicles, and the and the other type of you know uh, soft serve ice cream cone. We got the double dips, we got the soft serve, and we got the popsicles. The other patterns you don't really need to cut those out of the paper. They're more for card backgrounds and things. So out of this ice cream corner paper, these are the ones you'd want to cut out. This is the pattern paper you'd want to count, these three sheets. So I really like how they came out. So we're going to click OK, and I want to show you. See, some of these just don't come out. So one of, so my tip for this is, this is my tip for, for this. We're going, to take, we're going to take note. We're going to look at this paper, and we're only going to fix the ones we have to fix. So I need to, I need to zoom in to show you this. This is just another tip I have where instead of using the pencil trick on all your paper, and spending all this time doing the pencil trick, just go ahead and look at your paper and go, oh, well, which ones do I need to fix? Definitely the ones with Blackberry Bliss. I can see the color, I can see the background color, right? These are the, the sort of purplish ones. These, these Bermuda Bay ice cream cones, they came out fantastic, I don't need to fix those. So I don't need to use my pencil trick. So just on all the sort of purplish ones and the, and the green, which is called Old Olive. So I just, I kind of keep that on there and then while I'm, while I'm looking at that, I do the pencil trick. Okay, so while I'm looking at that, you don't have to look at that to see what I'm doing. I'm looking at that. You'd be looking at that on your screen and you'd only fix the ones you need to fix. So let's just fix these. You see what I mean? And, and you wanna sort of fix them in a way 
where you're like you're going with the curve of the ice cream cone you're not you're not si you're not trying to like make straight pointed lines just sort of curve so I'm only fixing the ones I need to fix so that's another trick I, all these were good all these Bermuda Bays were already good these little these ones here in the terracotta tile color were already good so I'm fixing these lighter ones and it seems to me like only the top of the ice creams got cut off not the whole bottom of the cone so I'm not fixing everything and of course don't fix the partial ice cream cones on the side of your paper because they don't need to be fixed because they get cut off just by being on the side of the paper and I think this one this one needs to be fixed now you do need to rescan again but and I don't need to fix the top of that so one I do need to fix this one that was one of my like I said the purple one which is called blackberry bliss definitely didn't get selected all right I'm happy I fixed them so now I'm looking at this again I kind of visually fixed it hope you can see that and I'm just gonna click OK and I'm not gonna try to cut those out I have to go back because I have to scan again because I fixed them they didn't scan because I didn't have they weren't there wasn't good contrast so I used my pencil trick and now I'm gonna try to scan them again and hopefully most of them get recognized because I fixed the ones that didn't didn't have to waste my pencil on the ones that were already good and didn't move the paper or anything because I already know that it was scanning well in this area of the mat. We're gonna click OK and perfect. I mean, most of them are totally perfect. Okay, so at this point now I can go zooming in, make the selection. I can click the ignore object size, get a little bit of the bits away from there. I, I'm just going to do it small this time. I mean, not too much, just to show you the other editing. I'm going to put that outline distance around it. Okay, that one was still a little messed up. A few of them are still a little messed up. But I'm going to go in there and I'm going to edit out these extra little bits, you know, with my editing, because I don't think you got to see a lot of that last time. So I'm even though so ignoring object size would have been a lo lot quicker. I wouldn't have to edit these out. But I'm just showing you that you have other options of editing them out. And you can select, you can toggle, you can toggle between the selections here to all the items on your mat. Okay, then I'm going to just get rid of those and I'm going to cut. I have mostly good, these, these just for some reason I didn't enclose them really well with the pencil and they became two parts, but that's okay. Anything, anything that I have to go back and fix later, I'm going to fix. And again, you can always use your color recognition mode for better results, but that takes me forever. And my, my machine literally ran out of memory and shut down on me when I, the last time, the last few times I used color recognition mode, my computer, my machine, cause there is a computer inside this machine. It ran out of memory and just shut down on me. So we didn't want that to happen during the middle of a tutorial, but I do like to tell you all the different options. And you saw how I did that at the beginning. All right, so I should have ignored object size and I wouldn't have to delete so many objects out, but you can see that you can edit out any objects that are small that you don't want to cut just by getting going into that editing mode and selecting those objects. I think there's just one left up there. The rest I'm just going to go ahead and cut. Come on, get to that one. There it is. Perfect. I have my outline distance of a 0 0.04 and I go ahead and I click cut. Oh, there was a couple little things on the top. I hope they got ignored. They did. And one of those ice cream cones is going to have a little whirly whirl at the top. It didn't really have a smooth transition because of, I think I forgot to use my pencil on one of the ice cream cones. I will see you in two minutes when this part gets cut out. It's finished cutting. We click OK. And now we can look at these ice cream cones and see how they came out. And I'm going to talk about a few more tips and tricks because I'm all about tips and tricks and on this channel. So yeah, so this one had a little whirly whirl. It had a little problem at the top, but I can actually take maybe this ice cream cone and I, you know, fix this one at the top. I just, that's because me, I forgot to, I forgot to outline that, but that's kind of cool looking actually. And I could put another scoop on top. I forgot to outline it completely with the pencil. I need to talk about a couple things just while it's on my mind. And before I, before I erase these now, a couple, 
here's a couple ways to use what's called, I call this the washi tape trick or the painter's tape trick. So if you don't want to use the pencil because you have to erase the pencil, but you still want to kind of give good contrast between the foreground and the background, you can always use little bits of tape along your ice cream cones. So you could, you could put these little pieces of tape here and that would be your outline. So what you could do, I mean, just, just kind of follow along with me here. Say this is your, this is your ice cream cone. I'm not cutting it exactly like an ice cream cone but this is painter's tape, it comes off. So instead of using a pencil, you could make a little outline for your ice cream cones, put them on there, right? It just, it helps, it helps the machine determine the foreground and the background. So pretend this is the size of your ice cream cone and you make a bunch of them, you stick them on your paper. You, if you're, especially if you're cutting a lot of the sheets of the same paper, put them on your ice cream cones, cut your ice cream cones, peel these back off. So then you didn't need, <clears throat> you didn't need to use pencil at all. You didn't need to do any eraser marks because you just, put on your little washi tape or your painter's tape and you peeled it off when you were done. So that's another way to trick the scanner into thinking you have a solid object. It's the little, I call it my washi tape trick, but it's also called the painter's tape trick. Now I get, I get viewers all the time, oh, oh my God, don't use tape in your machine. Oh, I got it stuck. And they're freaking out on me. And to the point of like, calm down. Like it's only a machine. You open up the bottom and you get the painter's tape out if it gets stuck in there. I mean, try not to use tape like washi tape that peels off very easily. Painter's tape does not peel off easily. I rub it on there real good. It doesn't get stuck in my machine. When it does, I open up the bottom of my machine, I get it out. I'm not a brother representative. I don't recommend that you take apart your machine, but like, don't panic over. I mean, it's up to you. If you wanted to not risk tape, it's using a pencil is a lot less risky, okay? But don't freak out on other people who use tape because the thing is, it's our machines and if something happens to our machines, it's all up to us. So use your machine at your own risk. If you wanna, if you use like washi tape, don't use tape that's gonna get stuck in there. Don't use cheap tape that's gonna come off and peel off and that you're gonna have to open up your machine all the time to try to get it out. Cause you can't, you can't do surgery on your machine all the time. I mean, you know, that's, that's a bad thing. But at the same time, if you're, if you bought a machine to cut and pattern paper, to cut stamped images, and you're not able to accomplish that, then what good is having a machine? So to me, to me, it's like whatever it takes to do the trick. In other words, if I'm gonna, if I have to use tape, if I have to use pencil, if I have to use all kinds of little witchcraft or whatever, no, I don't use witchcraft, you know what I mean. Then whatever I have to do, I have to do because that's the whole reason I have my three machines. I have three machines. It's to cut pattern paper, stamped images, to make crafts, to make embellishments. If I can't do that, then I have no business or I have no point in my machine. Like the machine does a lot more than that, but I'm saying if I can't cut out the things I want to cut out, then the machine is not doing what I want it to do. Beautiful ice cream cones. I'm just cutting off those little nibs. You don't even need to cut them off because like I said, as you layer your, your ice cream, you can kind of cover up any little defects. So that is how to cut the three pieces of paper. So now I want to tilt my camera and I want to show you my the whole pack of paper the whole bigger sheets i have because this is the only this was a partial pack i had the only full pack of paper i have left because i was doing a paper share uh still going on a little bit my deluxe paper shares are gone i still have embellishment shares and i still have some paper shares available till the end of january i even if i have to order them i'm still taking paper share orders till the end of january but i can't after that that's it no more paper shares that's on thepaperchef.com and I'll link that in the description. I'm just gonna, all I'm doing is emptying my, or taking my mat out just to make room on my table. So now I can show you some other things and I can tilt my camera. All right, so let's get into the ice cream corner. Let's get into projects. Why do we do all this, right? Why do we do all this? I mean, why is because we get awesome embellishments to, do for, to use for our projects. We use Stampin' Up! coordinating coordinating colors, coordinating materials, and we end up with some fantastic projects. Our, you know, projects and paper and oh. So this is Ice Cream Corner. I still have these catalogs available. So January to June mini catalog, if you're interested in that. You, uh, if you're in the US only, I can't mail them to other countries. I can't sell to other countries either, so I'm only a US demonstrator. Ice Cream Corner Suite, okay? This is the Ice Cream Corner Suite. This is the Ice Cream Corner Designer Series paper that I just cut out. This is the stamp set I use for these projects. I'm gonna show you sweet ice cream. Coordinating colors, terracotta tile, old olive, Bermuda Bay, blackberry bliss, and cinnamon cider. 
the full sheets before I talk about my results. Here are the full sheets. You get when you when you order this paper from my store, and it's always it's always while our catalog is in effect. So I mean, in other words, you want this paper. It's during this catalog period. So this paper is 12 by 12 double-sided sheets of designer series paper. It's just fantastic for birthdays. This goes really good with our, with our ice cream builder punch. Our ice cream builder punch lets you create little ice cream cones. And this, this back of this paper is great for making the bottom of the ice cream cones, which I, I think I did in some cards too. So the punch is in the suite, there's sprinkles, there's all kinds of products. Look at these watercolor pieces, great for punching out ice cream cones. And there's a piece of Blackberry Bliss on there. The popsicle page we cut out, just fantastic. Watercolor popsicles, they go really well with the watercolor. The watercolor popsicle stamp in here, I mean, that's fantastic. And I have an idea of some things to do with that watercolor stamp as well. Using this paper, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try that probably next. Polka dots sort of there, nice watercolor look, and that pager. Okay, where's the other piece? There was a piece of the other kind of cut. Well, you know what I mean. Here's the other piece. There it is. There's the last piece. This one, because we know we just cut that one. There's the ice cream cone paper on one side and the sprinkles on the other. All right, so here are my results. And I did the math even, you know, because I like to do a lot of experimentation so that you don't have to. Let's, let's take the piece of cinnamon cider for contrast as the back of this. Here we go. So for this piece here, we'll start out with the popsicles because that's how I started in the tutorial. I used, when I cut this paper, I used the top, I scanned the top of the mat. So I did a six by six, I did a 12 by six. I scanned the top of the mat, all but one popsicle cut out my first try, except I did use the pencil trick on these, on a few. So I used the pencil trick on a few popsicles just to enclose them. But 32 out of 33 popsicles First try, black and white recognition mode, perfect. 32 out of 33, that's 97% success rate on this paper, okay? And that was in the top half of the paper when I tried it, a 97% success rate, black and white recognition mode, okay? Then I, then I tried this paper here, and the first try, I had a very, very low success rate. I used black and white recognition mode and I didn't use my pencil trick. And for that paper, um, this ice cream cones, I I had a real low success rate. Then I went back and used, I, I changed it to color recognition mode for this here. I changed it to color recognition mode. I used my pencil trick and I had a pretty good success rate. This one never did scan in for some reason, but I had a 92% success rate with these ice cream cones. 23 out of 25 ice cream cones cut out, okay? But you, you know that you don't even have to use color recognition mode. You can use black and white like we just did in this tutorial. And then this this paper here, I just did it. I didn't I didn't finish doing it like we did here. But my first try, this is my first attempt. I just didn't go back and use pencil marks, which I will later. 8 out of 29. 28% success rate. That was without the pencil trick. 28% success rate. So I just wanted to show you that like I go through a lot of experimentation. All I need to do now is fix these with the pencil and run them back through and I'm going to have much better success rate. So those are my three papers I tried. And what I did with these embellishments is what I'm about to show you next. So let me tilt this a little bit. So we have, I have, I do a lot of, you know, craft fairs. Um, I'm not doing any this year because of, you know, all kinds of stuff going on in the world. But I have, I do things like that and I give a lot of gifts and I have what's called a, pri a host code prize drawing. When you, when you buy things on my channel, when you purchase items and use a host code, you're in a drawing. So, and then my team, I have my paper chefs team and they have their own challenges. So I'm always making little gifts to put in with the prizes and things, or, which I would do for a craft fair, okay? And so here are some things I came up with for this. These are these are ones I haven't decorated yet, but these are, this is the pens. It's a gel pen. It's an ice cream cone gel pen. And you can see, I'll link to the, my, the gel pens on inside the description of this video. Um, you, could, you can get other kinds of gel pens with other kinds of food on them. This is just ice cream cone gel pen and these are really good pens and they're just really really fun and I just did you're so cool and for this for, I didn't finish decorating these these ones yet so I just used pieces of designer series paper for the for the toppers I put these in bags I'll link to the bags too I put them in bags I put little toppers on them 
and and that's it I mean just ice cream cone popsicle I used Wink Estella I don't know if you could see that with the glitter on the ice cream cone this is a little dye from stitch so sweetly stitch so sweetly I also made a lot of these because I, I do all my stamping ahead of time I made these with stitch so sweetly too I put Wink Estella on that one you could see the glitter and then this is a oval punch so I just took pieces of I just took pieces of this like pieces of this paper that you saw the really cool that really cool pattern with the watercolor on it I mean I didn't do that 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 double tone I just let me show you there was there's just double tone paper here like these blotches of I mean you go in there you can you can punch out with the double oval punch these really cool two-tone sides and that's how I got the you're so cool and if any little white part got around the edges of it when I did it I just kind of took my little my little blends marker you know as I was cutting here let me show you so the double oval punch you might end up well that one's a cool one you might end up with like little white pieces sticking out and I would just kind of color the little edges with these with this alcohol blends marker so anyway that's how I got my toppers for this ice cream cone pens which I would these would be really good things to sell at craft fairs but in my case I just give them as gifts in my care packages for people my thank you gifts maybe like a waiter because you know how everyone's always stealing the pens of a waiter you know that kind of thing you give them you give them out as gifts random acts of kindness um, post office postal postal people whatever but in this case I'm using them as part of my prizes okay now here's some more things I use just like my prizes and care packages these are what's called the tag topper treats now we do have this really cool ribbon that came in the suite it's called the blackberry bliss but it's but it's on back order and I do have it in my ribbon share I do have some because I bought it for the ribbon share but the only piece I have left was this little piece just to show you so there is really cool I mean it's not it's not that we're not getting it back it's on back order it's blackberry bliss striped ribbon it's just a fantastic ribbon but so instead I use some retired I don't know if it's retired it might not be but it, I use some some striped Bermuda Bay ribbon Bermuda Bay cardstock and I made these embellishments here's the embellishments we just cut out with our designer series paper okay so all these embellishments is made possible one two three four five six so far get to see how I'm using the embellishments on my projects these are little tic tacs I do so many tic tacs on my site too the paperchef.com the kits I haven't take, taken pictures of the of the kit yet maybe I'll use this one for the spring design right now it's only the Christmas design all right now I'm showing you a couple cards and then I'll show you my last 3d project so here's a couple here are a couple cards this one is using again that really cool fantastic like this fantastic watercolor design I'm using some opal rounds just they're just these little blobs of like embellishment they go with this sand and sea suite these little opal rounds I like how they look like frosty and I put you're so cool again and these are all the embellishments I cut out using again the same method that we just did the thank you I forget I used a little die behind that stamped in Bermuda Bay and then for this one now I just wanted to show you the difference this one is one it's a variation of a card design I had already made when I was live and I came up with this design when I was doing my live unboxing and I actually stamped these three ice cream cones with the stamper and I did the punch I showed you the ice cream builder punch so this is a variation on that that I didn't have to use I used the ice cream builder punch but instead I just punched straight through this really cool watercolor I call them like these little watercolor blobs with my ice cream builder punch and I made an ice cream cone with the punch and then these three embellishments and you can see that wink of Stella on there these three embellishments are from the scan and cut so scan and cut for these three, double oval punch for that one, using some Wink of Stella, and then this is the ice cream builder punch. And I usually use my scan and cut when I'm making lots of card bases and strips, but in this case, I'm just using the scraps from my paper trimmer. But usually I make all these little strips and all these little designs uh, with my scan and cut, but definitely that's only made possible with the scan and cut. Okay, that was a different variation of that. And lastly, my fun project, my most fun project, I think, using these embellishments is this love you always treat box so I, I was experimenting with some sort of cr crystally effects type stuff to make it to make it sort of glow like it's melting but I didn't really like the way it curled the paper so instead I'm just going back to using Wink of Stella because Wink of Stella still makes things shiny like they're uh, like they're frosted 
but it doesn't curl my paper as much. And Wink of Stella is just a glitter pen that we sell at Stampin' Up! And I put that on everything. It's just a little brush. It's just a brush glitter pen and you just brush things. I even brushed, I even brushed the outside of this little You're So Cool embellishment. Okay, so for this one, I put thank you on the front with the Oso oh Ombre paper. Thank you on the back with the Oso oh Ombre paper. Treat yourself. And then I could put, I could have put stuff here, but my little ice cream cones, I think they were too tall. Yeah. So I didn't do it. I was going to put them down like that, but then I just decided not to put stuff on the side. I might put more sentiments on the side, but they, these just didn't fit there. And the top of the, the top of the box is I, I used petal pink for the top of the box just because I was already coloring the box for a different tutorial. And in, in there is just some um, little ice cream sticky, sticky notes to go with the theme. Okay, so just, just more fun stuff. So sometimes when people win a prize, in my host code drawing, instead of picking a stamp set, they say surprise me. And then I always add like, you know, even more fun stuff like this, but into their prizes. And then I have these little pens, these little gel pens. I'm always collecting things at little stores and stuff. So these little gel pens, I take one of them and I could put that in with, in with this little gift. And again, these are just fun for care packages. See, the little pen fits right in there. Then this is a little slider box. These are called the Love You Always Treat Boxes. Also in our January to June mini catalog. So I hope you enjoyed these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven projects that I created using these embellishments that we just cut out with the scan and cut. So I hope you now understand how to cut your own pattern paper using whichever pattern paper you have. Don't get frustrated if your pattern paper doesn't work. Either try color recognition mode, try the pencil trick, try the washi tape trick, which I call the, or the painter's tape trick. Uh, try color recognition mode if black and white doesn't work and just move on and give and know when to give up. Well, we try not to ever give up on this channel, but try know when to just say, look, some paper's not gonna scan it, scan with, it's gonna, everything will scan because there's acetate tricks and there's other tricks. Everything will eventually scan and cut out with, with a bunch of trickery, but know when, know when your time is worth more than the results you're getting. That's what I'm trying to say. Because everything will eventually cut out, but you have to know when to give up and move on to other, other types of projects. All right, well, that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you next time.